So guys, uh, today's class is about uh, working with variables and data types in Java. So first of all, you try to understand what programming is all about. If you are completely new to programming or if Java is your first programming language, then you try to understand that programming is nothing but group of instructions performing operations on data. Is it clear? Group of instructions performing operations on data. This is what we call programming. So when I say data, then you should store the data inside the computer's memory so that the instructions can perform operations on the data so that the instructions can uh, produce some result based upon that data. So in programming languages, variables are nothing but the containers in the memory to store the data or you can say to store the information whatever you want. So here you can, you can uh, see some picture I have given. From this, you, you can understand very clearly that there are totally three different containers are there. And in those three different containers, you are storing some information. And technically, if you want to know, then variable is nothing but the name given to the memory location. Variable is nothing but the name given to the memory location. So, see, suppose if you want to store as of any person, then you'll, this is your computer memory. Let me show you. This is your computer memory. In this computer memory, you should reserve some amount of space and inside this space, you will store some value. Say if I say a is equals to 20, then a variable is created with the name h and the value 20 will be stored. This is your memory. Now, we are storing data inside the computer memory to perform operations. So, what kind of operation can be performed on a variable is decided based upon the type of data. So, I'll tell you very clearly. See, suppose if you have two variables like a equals to 10 and b equals to 20 and if I say c equals to a plus b. So what is the result you are expecting? Obviously, in C language, you are expecting 30 as the result. Okay, now, if I say X equals to Raj, Y equals to Kumar, and if I say Z equals to X plus Y, then what you are expecting in Z, Raj, Kumar, you are expecting. Means, here the plus operator is behaving differently. Here the plus operator is behaving differently. So here the plus operator is performing arithmetic operation addition on this data of these two variables. Here the plus operator is performing the concatenation operator. So how the plus operator knows that what kind of operation it has to perform that is decided by the data type. that is decided by the data type. So remember, data type tells what type of data that a variable can hold and how much size it will occupy and what kind of operation can be performed on that particular data. So variables and data types are the basic requirement of any programming language. Hope you got clarity that what is variable? A variable is nothing but name of the memory location where data is stored. Data type tells that what type of data that a variable will hold. Why? Because based upon the data type only, the size type of operation will be decided. So in Java, the data types are divided into two types, primitive types and non-primitive types. In primitive types, you will have integral type. That's a thing but whole numbers. Floating type, 
that's nothing but decimal numbers and next we have character and we have boolean in non primitives we have derived and reference types but the focus of this particular session is to just work on the primitive types so here in integral type we have byte we have short we have int we have long byte is going to occupy only one byte of space in the memory like short is going to occupy two bytes int is going to occupy four bytes long is going to occupy eight bytes float and double float four bytes and double eight bytes so float and double are used to store decimal values but whereas byte short int long are used to store whole numbers character is for storing one single character and boolean is to represent true or false so guys this is what the table which will tell you how many bytes that each variable is going to occupy in the form of bytes as well as bits and the range range is nothing but uh, what is the smallest and what is the largest number you can store on a specific data type okay and note and i have given you have to suffix l and f for long and float types uh, that i'll explain you when i show you practically that how you can work with this data types but before we go into uh, like uh, practicals of this session like before we see practically how to work with data types i would like to tell you one important point that in java character occupies two bytes of space in the main memory two bytes but if you are coming from c language background if you have worked with c language then in c language character occupies one byte okay so every programming language will make use of encoding character set means what are the data you are using in your program that has to be converted into binary format that's nothing but ones and zeros so every programming will language will use it use some encoding format so java is designed based upon unique code character set where is your c language will make use of ascii character set ascii stands for american standard code for information interchange it has totally 256 different types of characters starting from 0 to 255 but whereas unicode character set supports totally 65536 characters which covers characters from most of the languages in the world so to represent this much of data it requires 16 bits that nothing but two bytes of data so in java in java character data type occupies two bytes of space in the main memory now we'll see how how to work with uh, this uh, data types programmatically so what i'll do is i'll use this uh, editor that is edit plus okay and i'll say file new and i'll say java and here i'll give the class name as data type demo and first i'll save this so what i'll do is i'll go to e drive in e drive i i think i've created one folder with the name for java 8 to 9 pm and here data type demo dot java is the program name i have given first of all let me go to this command prompt e drive cd for java 8 to 9 pm and uh, i'll compile this program first java c data type demo dot java and i'll run this so that it will display hello world on the screen 
and uh, that indicates that everything is fine. That's something, but the program is working fine. Now, now, now I'll show you how we can work with data types. See, suppose if you want to store roll number of a student, then you'll say integer roll number and you'll assign some value. If you want to store name of the student, then you'll say string name and you'll assign some value to it. If you want to store gender, then you'll assign one single character, something like this. If you want to store the average marks, then 99.8998 will say. If you want to store the height, then you'll say double. Height equals to, you'll say 5.6. If you want to store the mobile number of this candidate, then you will say a long mobile number equals to double nine eight nine two one two three four five some dummy number I'm entering. Okay, and if you want to store is this student has uh, paid the fees, then I'll I'll take one data type like boolean is fees paid, and here you can assign the value true. System dot out dot print alarm. Out dot print alarm. This is the statement to print a message on the screen, and I'll say roll number one one label will get printed. So whatever you want to print it on the screen, that message I am writing in the double quotes plus concatenation. I'll say roll number. Like this, I'll write multiple statements for printing roll number, for printing name for printing mobile number, for printing gender, for printing average, for printing height, for printing is fees paid. So let me change like first roll number after that name. <coughs> I'll say name, then I'll say mobile number. See here the variable name I have given as M number. So don't think that you have to write in double quotes M number only. See M number is just the variable name. Here you have to write it completely. Why? Because when, when the output gets displayed on the screen, you should understand like what it is going to print. <coughs> and while printing the value, you have to say M number. Next I'll say gender. Gender. And the variable name is gen. Then next we can say average, average and the variable name is abg. Then you can say height and uh, the variable name is height. Then you can say is fees paid, fees paid and here the variable name is is fees I think we have displayed everything. Okay. So let's run this program once and see whether it is giving output or not. I'll say Java C data type demo.java. So here you are getting error. Where you are getting error once check. You are getting error for mobile number. Line number 7 and line number 8 go to the program and by mistake I have given two double equal to sign that I have rectified and as per industry standards you can give some space before this uh, assignment operator so that it will look good it will be it will be nice okay and we are getting error at this at this line number seven also why because this 10 digit number is considered as a whole number and by default Java treats whole numbers as uh, integers. So according to Java you are storing very big integer number to long data type. So you have to tell Java that this is not an integer number this is a long number because it is having 10 digits. So you have to add L at the end of the like uh, that letter, that's the thing, but at the end of this number, you have to add L. Okay. 
So let's see. Now one more problem, we got it. Uh, here, line number nine and line number 16. Let's try to understand what is the problem at line number 16. You can read the error message also, see. Possibly, lose the conversion from double to float. By default, Java considers, by default Java considers, decimal data as a double type. By default, Java considers decimal data as a double type. So according to Java in line number nine, you are assigning a double number. According to Java, it is double. So double number you are assigning to float type. Because double is at the higher side, the higher number you are assigning to lower, lower type actually. So you have to tell Java that, hey, this is not a double number, this is a float number. So you can use F at the end of this number. You can suffix that uh, number. That F can be either capital F or lowercase f, anything can use it. Okay, next. Gender, I have written variable name completely. So I need to take uh, completely. That's it. Program is compiled. Now you can execute it. And guys, you can see here, roll number, name, mobile number, gender, average, height, fees paid. Everything I have shown to you. So in this example, you will get an opportunity to work with each and every primitive data type what you have discussed theoretically. Okay. So thank you, Chaitan Lakshmi. Thank you so much for uh, uh, correcting me, the gender type. Now, when it comes to programming, everyone initially works with one programming language. Uh, sorry, one, one programming example, like uh, adding up two numbers. The same program I'll show you, but with some uh, different way. In a different way, I'll show you that. So here, uh, add demo, I'm giving the program name. Here, instead of taking integer numbers, I'll say, I'll say, byte A comma B comma C. I've taken three variables, okay, with the name A, B, C of byte type, A equals to 10, B equals to 20, and I'll say C equals to A plus B. Okay, and uh, we'll try to print this system dot out dot print ln print ln and uh, I'll say result is C. Okay, save this to add demo. So let me go to this uh, e drive and core Java eight to nine. Add demo dot Java is the program name. I've saved. Go to the command prompt. Here you can say Java C add demo dot Java. Program I have compiled successfully, but it is not getting compiled. It's throwing an error. At line number eight, I'm getting an error saying that incompatible types possible lose a conversion conversion from into to byte. So it's saying that incompatible, but if you can see, all the variables have taken off byte only. But do you know the problem here? The problem at line number eight is, when you look at this expression, this is known as plus arithmetic operator, which is an addition operator. And this addition operator generally returns or produces an integer result. See, A and B are of byte type. There is no issue in that. But after adding these two numbers, it is producing one result, say 30. So the plus operator is giving an integer result. 30 is considered as integer type. So according to Java, you are assigning an integer number to a byte type. Integer is considered as the higher side because it's occupying four bytes. Byte is occupying only one byte. Byte. It's the lower one. 
it's like uh, four liters of milk. You cannot accommodate in one liter of jug. There will be a lot of wastes. Four liter of milk, you cannot adjust in one liter of can. But if four liter of milk can is having one liter of milk, then you can pour it in one liter of can. Is this clear? So we have to tell explicitly, clearly that, hey Java compiler, don't worry. Though the arithmetic operator is returning an integer value, but that integer is not too big. It is small integer and that small integer can be assigned to byte type. So here what you have to do is, first of all, you have to keep this in brackets and then you have to type cast it. What is the target type? It's a byte. So this, this, <coughs> this operation, you have to group it and after that you have to say that the target type is byte type. Save this program, compile it, run it. run it and you will see the result as 30. So just everyone just let me know in the chat box that have you understood this is just basic adding of two numbers program only but have you noticed have you noticed that in a small adding of two numbers program itself we have witnessed so much of twist in the program. Just type in the chat box, the chat window is open. If you feel that the very basic level program, adding of two numbers itself has a lot to learn. And in the first exam, when we have declared some variables and assigned some values, declared some variables and assigned some values, we got error while assigning that F variable. Thank you, Rajula. Have you, have you experienced that F and L? Is it clear? Because by default, decimal numbers are treated as double type. By default, the lengthy numbers, the numbers about nine digits are considered as long numbers. So that is the reason we have to explicitly add F and uh, L while you are working with those data. So everyone just let me know, have you understood this? Have you experienced, uh, though you might be knowing Java, you might have learned Java, but do you feel that you have learned something new today? Chaitan Lakshmi, uh, Monica, Pranit, Praveen, Sairaj, Sheikh, Sunil, Hari, Priya, like uh, more than 25 people are there. So everyone just let me know in the chat box, have you experienced some new learning? Something new have you experienced? These programs already have explained you. This is also have explained you. Okay, and uh, one important point we'll, we'll, we'll try to understand now. That is, let me create one more program. Test program name I'm creating is test. Let me save this program inside uh, eDrive with the name uh, for Java. I'll say test.java. Okay. So in Java, you cannot declare, means you cannot use an uninitialized variable. Means if I simply say integer number, and if I do not assign to any value, and if I try to print the number, those who are coming from C language background, can you tell me what will happen that in C language, if you do not initialize a variable and if you try to print it, what will be its value? Can anybody tell me in the chat box? Chat window is open. You can just type in the chat box in C or C++, in C or C++, if I declare a variable and if I do not initialize to any value, 
and if I print print it, then can you tell me what value I'll get it? Sairaj Basa, uh, Rajula Brahmanandam, congratulations for giving the correct answer. We'll get garbage value. Mm -hmm. We'll get garbage value. In C and C++, we'll get garbage value. Can you tell me what we'll get in Java? Can you tell me what we'll get in Java? In Java, the program will not compile. It will throw an error. The program will not compile. It will throw an error. And can you read the error message? It's saying that variable might not have been initialized. Means Java will not allow to make use of any variable without initialization. Is this clear point, everyone? This is an interview question. This is an interview question, guys that in Java, variable without initialization are not allowed. If at all, if you use it, then it will throw an error. Understood everyone? Understood everyone a new point? If you, if you are not aware of it. Yeah, it is only for local variables. It's only for local variables. Instance variables are by default in slides with default values. That concept will come in classes and objects. Instance variable. Instance variables, that's the, the variables which are part of uh, objects. They are by default in sliced. Is this clear, Basha? Next. From Java 10 onwards, right from JDK 10 onwards. Java people have introduced a new keyword that is known as var, V-A-R, var. It will help you to declare, var keyword will help you to declare variables without specifying its data type. Means you can say var number equals 200. You can say var x equals to welcome. This is something like uh, Python. Is it clear? If if you are if you are having knowledge of Python, then uh, do you know in Python you need not to declare any data type for a variable. You can directly take the variable and assign some value for it, and based upon the value, the data type will be decided. Can you remember this? <coughs> this is in Python. So. Java people also thought to give that kind of experience to Java programmers. So they introduced the concept called uh, where keyword from Java 10 onwards. This keyword will help you to declare variable without specifying any data type. And the data type of these variables will be decided based upon the value what you are assigning to it. Is this clear guys, everyone? Just let me know in the chat box. And yes, in JavaScript also, we can use the same concept. Okay. Next, guys, I'll show you something very, very interesting. Observe carefully. I'm writing one program with the name sample. Okay. And uh, I'll say system.out.println. This program will run without compilation. This program will run without compilation. I'm I'm saving this file with the name sample. And where I am saving, you know, I'll save it in E drive. Four Java 8 to 9. And I'll save it. Remember, I have created a file with the name sample. I won't compile it. I won't compile. I'll run this program directly. And how it is possible? Right from Java 11 onwards, remember, right from Java 11 onwards, they introduced a concept 
where the java programs will be executed directly without compilation starting with java s11 for the first time in the programming language history you can execute a script containing java code directly without compilation the java 11 source execution feature in java the new feature which is added is known as source execution feature which will help you to run the java program directly from the command prompt without compilation so let's have a look let's have a look i'll say simply java i am not compiling and i'll say sample.java so java is nothing but the interpreter i am giving the dot java file it will directly run it is this crazy guys is this crazy just let me know in the chat box if you really feel that this is the first time you saw that we can we can run a java program without compilation next is there anyone from python background just let me know in the chat box if it, is there anyone from the python programming language background just let me know in the chat box very good very good so sairaj when you initially start with python are you writing any big programs or uh, you will find some ideally there you execute your python scripts directly have you have you experienced like we'll open ideally i'll show you this is ideally okay in ideally this is python ideally guys i'll say 100 plus 200 you'll get the result directly if you want to print welcome you can simply say welcome and it will print it this is python so java people thought that interactive mode yes interactive mode python interactive mode so java people thought that they also should provide this interactive mode to the java programmers so they introduced a tool right from jdk 9 onwards the tool name is j shell j shell is an interactive tool for learning the java programming language and prototyping the code means if you want to just test test some piece of code in java then you need not to write like big program class main method for doing small tasks, you can use J shell. So what you can do is you just go to command prompt and just type uh, J shell. J shell will open like this. It will open. It will take some fraction of seconds of time and then it will open. And this, this will provide you the interactive mode for executing JavaScripts. So if you want to run, like if you want to do some small calculation then you can just directly write it here is it clear you need not to 12 into 2 24 you'll get it if you want to print hello world without writing big program you can simply work like this is it interesting or not those who are coming from python background uh, they'll feel that java also given uh, such a, a beautiful interactive environment for executing small lines of java code okay now if you want to come out of this uh, this uh, like uh, j shell slash and you have to type exit then you'll come out of this uh, shell shell is nothing but that interactive mode is it clear so guys this is about uh, variables data types and uh, some of the new features like where keyword j shell and uh, executing java programs without compilation so let me know in the comments below this video that how is this session and have you really enjoyed or not